Welcome to this very first Great Academy lecture in chemistry. I'm Stephanie Ledworth and um, I'm delighted that you could join me. I want to spend this introduction lesson to give you an idea of what we're up to and what the plan is so that you have an idea of where everything sits. So the first thing that we have to look at is, right, it's, it's about the Leaving Cert and it's about getting the highest grades, but also to actually make sure that you understand it. Now, the problem with chemistry is the devil is actually in the detail. And so that's why you've got a huge amount of lessons here all of them recorded with supplementary uh, notes. And I'm just going to talk to you about the exam paper outline first. Now, this is what your exam paper will look like um, in June. The exam paper in chemistry separates into section A and section B. And the section A have three questions and you are obliged to do at least two, but it really is very prudent to do three. The first one is always on titrations. The second one is always on organic practicals. And there are about eight of those. And the third one can be the other eight practicals, which are rates and other things like that. Um, if you knew those sections inside out, which hopefully you will, I mean, you are talking about already hitting practically 40%. And some of the stuff here actually appears in other parts of the paper too. Question four is always a great idea. In fact, it's a great idea for revising because it's like a little table quiz, little questions, and you should always try all the question fours. And you can actually make two mistakes and still get full marks here because uh, they give you um, 11 questions, do eight. And um, even doing those, the first two correct ones, you get a free extra mark because six eights are 48 plus two makes 50. Looking at one, two, three, and four, you're already on 50%. Of course, you want to do much better than that. So question five and one of these half parts here is always about atomic structure and the periodic table and bonding. And it's so fundamental that you have to know it inside out. And that will be uh, certainly a big plan. Question six is fuels. Organic again. And organic fuels are, of course, very, very important. And so there's a whole section on organic. So there's a question. Two is organic practicals. Question six is organic fuels. Question four, there are at least two, if not more, questions based in the organic section as well. Now, doing one, two, three, four, five, and six you're already in a happy position of being on 75%. Now, question seven, eight, nine. One of these is an organic question. Another one can either be on rates or water or acids and pH or water with rates. Now, that combination is definitely, here is another question you can definitely know from organic, but you also have the options. Question 10, uh, you have three parts and you have get marked out of your best two. So A, B or C, two of the three. And again, you have an internal choice in question 11. Now, again, all of those things can be uh, rotated around. Question 11, part C, is one of the options. And the options aren't really required. And some, in fact, some schools don't even do them. I have a Premier Pericles one that uh, people use. But apart from that, you really have enough by the time I'm finished with you. So what you should be doing is, one. what I plan to prepare you for is question one, two, three, all of four, all of five, all of six, all of the seven, eight or nine, 10 and 11. So we're going to pretty much in the space do the whole course really. But of course, as I say, it is fiendishly difficult if you don't have the basics. So the contents page, I'm just going to talk to you through. I put them down into 10 compartments and I have the word atomic structure written there because it's all about the atom. But we look in very fine detail about what's in the atom, what they're doing, how it's important and what you have to know about them. So it goes with the atom itself, the little history of how the atom structure was imagined and then discovered, and then the different 
other parts, which are the electron, majorly important because everything revolves around the sharing or passing of electrons from one to the other. So the entire rest of the course hinges on you understanding this, how they configure, whether they'll actually, the mistakes that were made, the model of Bohr and the history of the periodic table, then the mass spectrometry and radioactivity. All of those eight lessons are giving you the question five, at least two questions in question four, and a half a question in the very least in, quest in section 10, number 10 or 11. Bonding is critical. So the bonding that happens within a molecule or a compound, and then the bonding that happens between one molecule and its next door neighbors, and the shapes of the molecules and what do triple and bonds and double bonds and what are the trends in the periodic table which makes life much easier if you can see the big picture and then something that's fundamental that people don't get and I find my students the penny eventually drops with them when I go through this so this is done in a paint document and it looks a little bit messy but I think at the end of the lesson you will get a complete idea of what you should know about naming compounds and then when you've named them how they interact in equations and how to balance them and of course we come to this thing that a lot of students eyes glaze over the mole just going through the mole in the maths taking you through stoichiometry, mole ratios from those chemical equations, which you have to understand from the previous section. Then the gas laws and how are they related to the mole and the ideal gas equation and how all these ideal gases, which don't exist, work. Then we go to the maths of titrations. You can't jump in there without having an understanding of what came before. And so we take you through all the maths of titrations, all the different types of titrations and right down to the calculation of X, which is probably the most complicated bit at the end of any of the titrations. So then we go to water and we talk about water treatment, sewage treatment, then eutrophication and the Winkler method for finding out the dissolved oxygen, your hardness in water, and then pollution and all the analysis that is done. We look at rates of reaction and that stands alone. It is regularly asked. And then this is acids and bases. Sometimes that gets placed beforehand because after you've done titrations, really, it doesn't really matter where acids and bases sit. The pH of weak acids and bases will require you to understand a little bit about oxidation and reduction. So seven and eight can sit anywhere. If you find that you're, you're learning that in a class, wherever you are, go and find yourself watching these two films and these two lessons. And then when you go into class, you'll find it much easier. Then organic, look, I didn't really mean to write them all in capitals, but they are actually really important. This is at least three, if not three and a half or more questions in every single exam paper since 2002, which is why I've broken it up. This is the fuels, how you name things, what the families are. And we have a whole series of one pagers in every chapter to put them all there on one page so that you can understand it. And this one, last one, number 10, equilibrium. This is something that pupils find really difficult. And you would have difficulty even if you looked at it if you haven't watched the mole and the balancing of equations. So one relies on the other. I'm looking forward to making sure that you get this and that the penny does drop with a significant amount of this abstract course. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in lecture one, the atomic structure. Thank you for watching this great academy lecture. Until next time, happy learning.